section 2.7, dilations. This is the last section of this chapter. Uh, dilation, I always get confused with this word because uh, for some reason when I think uh, dilation, I always think that your pupils dilate and they get smaller, but that's not right. That's not correct. Di dilate actually means to enlarge, but in the realm of mathematics, dilation can be either making a figure larger or smaller with what we call respect of a center of dilation. In other words, if this was my original picture right here, it's dilated as an enlargement to get to here and it, or vice versa. Let's say that this was my original, the dilation to this point would actually be a reduction. So just keep that in mind. Dilation in mathematics either means get bigger or get smaller. So try to keep it simple. All right, speaking of getting bigger and smaller, there's something that we call a scale factor. It's the ratio of the side lengths of the image to the corresponding side lengths of the original figure. So we've already been kind of doing this already with similar figures. We've been finding the ratio, and that's pretty much it. It's just a ratio of what size it is. So it's nothing too terribly hard. Uh, lastly, we're only going to be concerned about dilating a figure with respect to the origin, all right, so which is zero, zero on the coordinate plane. We can dilate a figure anywhere we want to and however we want to, but it gets kind of complicated and we're not doing that. And so we're just going to be worrying about the origin because it's nice and simple because all we have to do is multiply it by the scale factor, which in this case would be K. So we multiply the coordinates of each vertex by K. And I'll give you all that information in a little bit. And the last two pieces, if K is bigger than one, it means that the dilation is an enlargement. So if I have a scale factor of three, it means that I am enlarging my picture by three times. And then if it says, if the K is greater than zero and K is less than one, the dilation is a reduction. So what does that mean? Basically look at it like this. If K is equal to a fraction such as seven eighths or I don't know, th uh, three fifths, these would be a reduction. Now, I will tell you that this might be a problem. Maybe you get a scale factor of, I don't know, uh, four thirds, all right? Would this be a reduction? No, it wouldn't and I can prove it because if we put four thirds into a calculator and say four thirds, we can change it to a decimal, it's 1.33333, which you better know is one and one third, and that is actually larger than one. So if I use four thirds as my scale factor, it's actually gonna be an enlargement. So don't just assume that because it's a fraction that it's going to be a reduction. Always make sure that this cannot be, is not above one. Just keep that in your mind because sometimes that might catch you off guard. Now, with that said, let's move on to the stuff and things. So, it asked me to tell whether the shaded figure is a dilation of, of the non-shaded figure. Well, just by looking at this, I'm going to say yes. But the way we double check it is we're going to look at a couple of vertexes. I'm gonna look at this one and this one and its corresponding pieces. So this and this, they correspond with one another. And I'm going to do, draw a line in between them. And it's going to go off my screen. And then I'm going to do the same thing with here and here. And they go here. Notice how they come to a certain point. If I did the same thing at these other places, if I was able to get an exact measurement, that is, at, and be precise, you would notice that every point on this shape that corresponds with every point on this shape would all end up... And drawing a line to this point. So that would be my center of dilation would be right here. So yes, this is a dilation. Two is pretty straightforward. They, this is the rotation. I'm not even going to shortcut this. I'm just going to say or make this difficult. It's a rotation. So no, it is not. Three, just by looking at it, it seems to be the case, but let's verify. So I'm gonna move my paper here, and I'm going to connect all my vertexes, corresponding ver vertexes together. All right, so we've got that one. Let's connect this. Oops, stuck on my paper. Ah, no. There we go. 
and that goes here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the last vertex. All right, notice what I have. That's kind of cool looking actually. Neat, that, <laughs> sorry. That is a cool looking shape. All right, so what you see here is that all the vertexes, when we draw a line that goes straight through them, they all meet at this center point of dilation. So yes, these two pictures, this is a dilation of one another. Now, let's go to four. It says, the vertex of a figure are given. Draw the figure and its image after the, a dilation with the given scale factor. Identify the type of dilation. So let's just draw these first. This says A is negative two. All right, A is negative two and two. So that would be my first point. This would be A. Then B would be one and two. So that would be B. And then lastly, C is one and negative one. So this would be C. All right, let's draw that together. All right, so there is my original shape. So then it gives me a K, the scale factor of three. Now, remember what I said, that we're doing this based upon the origin, and it just says this. It says, to dilate a figure with respect to the origin, multiply the coordinates of each vertex by K. And then it gives me this more information. If K is greater than one, it's an enlargement. If K is between zero and one, basically a fraction, it's a reduction. So just by knowing that little definition, Looking at K, automatically, I know that that's greater than one, so I know that this is an enlargement. Now, the other piece to it was basically it said to take this and multiply it by each of the coordinates. So if I want to know what A prime is, I am simply going to take three and multiply it by all of this. Three times negative two is negative six, Three times two is positive six. B prime would be one times three is three. Two times three is six. C prime would be one times three is three. And negative one times three is negative three. I found all of my new vertexes. Okay, so let's plot those things. S negative six and six, negative six and six. This would be A prime. Then I have three and six. So three and six would be here. This would be B prime. And then I have three and negative three. Three and negative three, which would be here. And this would be C prime. And now what I can do is just connect all my pictures. And just to kind of show things a little bit differently, I'm going to do a dashed line just to kind of show that these shapes uh, is indeed different from one another and that it is an enlargement. All right, so this was my original and I did an enlargement because of the, it was bigger than one and that's what it looks like. Let's do the next one. Right from the get-go, we have these four points, so let's plot them. Four and two, so four and two. This would be D. Then I have four and eight, which would be here. This is E. Eight and eight, so eight and eight would be here. This would be F. And then eight and two would be here, so this would be G. And we can connect our points to see our shape, which we know right off the bat should be a rectangle just by looking at the way the points are plotted on our coordinate plane. So there is my original shape. And it tells me that I have a scale factor of one half. Right off the bat, you should realize that this is between zero and one, so this is going to be a reduction. And now, because of the same thing, I want to know what D prime is. I'm simply gonna take this and multiply it by my ordered pairs. Four times one half is two. Uh, two times one half is one. E prime is going to give me two uh, and four because four times one half is two, eight times one half is four. F prime is going to give me eight times one half is four, eight times one half is four. And then G prime is going to give me four and one. 
All right, uh, just a tattletale on myself. When I started to plot this a while ago, I put some wrong numbers in there, but my numbers, were, I, put, I plotted them incorrectly, so I had to edit that out. But hey, it's easy to make mistakes, but I do want to show you this again. So we have two one would be my D prime, two four would be here, would be my E prime, 4-4 four, four would be here, which would be my F prime. And then 4-1 would be right here. And this would be my G prime. And it's just kind of hard to get in all my uh, points are getting kind of crisscrossed. But now I'm going to connect them with a dotted line just to show the picture that we have created. All right. So there we go. I have done a reduction. This was my original and it reduced to a smaller size. All right, now let's look at this. A rectangular is dilated using a scale factor of six. The image is then dilated using a scale factor of one third. What scale factor could you use to dilate the original uh, rectangle? So let's just kind of look at it. Let's say I have, I'm just going to use a point value x and y so we know it's a rectangle and this is just going to be one of those um, one of those ordered pairs it tells me that i i did a scale factor of six and that means that based upon what we're doing and we're doing it according to the origin i'm simply going to multiply everything by six just like i multiplied everything up here by three and i multiplied everything up here by one half so when I do, that becomes 6x, 6y, whatever those might be, when I multiply it by 6. Now it tells me I, I do another dilation by a third. So I'm going to multiply it by one third. When I do, I get 2x because 6 times one third is 2 and 2y. So what happened? These right here, when I multiplied them, I could have simply set, they just changed that scale factor from original, which was this, to a six. And then once we multiplied it by the one third, I got a scale factor of two. So I could have just simply multiplied these two numbers. What's six times one third? Two. I could have done that without having to do each and individual piece because it is a multiplication. All right, and that's it for this video. The one thing I will tell you is in your assignments, you're gonna see some transformations that have a combination of dilations um, and reflections and all the other things that we've covered up in this chapter. So just keep that in mind. And as always, you know how to find me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.